quick overview, we start off by looking at this little diagram here, basic outline of what marketing is. I'll just walk you through the three pieces of marketing, segmentation, targeting, positioning, and then describe the marketing mixes, seven Ps as well. This is just, or then just a little summary of what I hope you take away from the video. Nothing too crazy. I think you'll find that marketing can actually be pretty interesting, believe it or not, but we'll find out. So first we're going to look at segmentation. Basically segmentation is when you divide your market or the people who may potentially purchase your product or service uh, into different pieces called segments. Now there's four main segments that marketers tend to divide their markets into and those are demographic, psychographic, behavioral, and geographic. And I'm going to go into each of these a little bit more. Um, Demographic, think about filling out those boring survey questions. It's going to ask you your age, your gender, uh, your income, maybe your family size, whether your family whether your family is a family of three or a single mom, that makes a difference in who may buy your service. Um, a large family may not need a babysitter as frequently as a single mom with two jobs, for example. Uh, next, we're going to look at psychographics. So this is going to look inside your consumer as much as possible. We're going to try and understand what their personality is, their values, attitudes towards certain things, uh, and basically what they prioritize most. Um, after that is behavioral segments, which consist of what, where, and who they spend their money on. So they'll possibly buy, you know, a lot of movies, but do they buy them in store or online? Who do they buy them from? Maybe off of their Apple TV. These are questions you're going to be asking for that segment, and. Lastly, we have geographic, and this is a bit self-explanatory, but we're going to ask things like, what city do you live in? So maybe that's Paris. What state do you live in? Arizona. What country? The United States. Maybe even what region it is, so you can focus on different weather and patterns, frequencies or purchases that go along with that. Um, and that basically sums up our segmentation piece. Uh, so next we're going to talk about targeting. And when you look at targeting, you're basically wanting to figure out what service or product you're trying to offer and decide what segment would be best fit for the consumer that you're focusing on. Uh, think about it like you're narrowing down the filters on an Amazon purchase. You add the things you want, you hide the things that you don't. This allows you to be more effective with your message rather than spending all the money to have just everyone see it. Uh, Instagram and Snapchat do this very well because when you're watching makeup tutorials on Snapchat, the ads that are in between will have to do with makeup. Whereas if you're looking at cars on Instagram, uh, ads for vehicles near you tend to pop up. But kind of another example of where you'd use targeting could be when you focus on college and high school students. Uh, what you're offering needs to be young and relevant, but still stylish because people want to show off to their peers. Uh, however, younger generations are starting to care about our environment. So you may want to focus on being more ethical and sustainable to appeal to that younger audience. Uh, you can kind of compare that to the boomer generation. So boomers are going to focus more on how well it works, not necessarily how it looks, and that's why those old people's shoes such as New Balance exist. Also, you have to realize that if you have a technological service that you're selling, like this Prezi presentation, uh, it needs to be easy to use because that generation wasn't born in the technology. It tends to be a little bit more difficult for them to catch on. Um, and so that's basically targeting, and that really just brings us into our last overarching idea of positioning, which is actually going to going to combine segmentation and targeting and kind of explain why we do them. Uh, positioning is focusing on where in the consumer's mind your service is ranked and what perceptions they have about you. So marketers need to know what segment they want to focus on and target them effectively so that consumers will rate your service as the best. Uh, if we think about the brand Gucci, one of the things they sell is high-end bags as well as accessories. More often than not, Gucci is going to target wealthier women who are middle-aged, desiring status, or maybe already have status that they want to show off. So this is where positioning can get tricky. Uh, when a less wealthy woman looks uh, and thinks about Gucci, they may view it as a complete waste of money, or they may aspire to own one, hopefully, when they have enough money. That same division of position can be seen when wealthy women are looking at the brand Gucci. Um, they might see it as a sense of status, which is what Gucci wants them to see them as, or they might hold Gucci to a worse position and think that they're just another mass-produced bag. That's why it's important to target the correct segment with the correct message and shape the correct position as best as you can. Now, positioning, segmentation, and targeting are all very important, but that kind of leads us into the seven P's of the marketing mix. Uh, so think of these seven P's as kind of a guideline or overview of what points a marketer uh, will focus on with their service. 
So product's gonna be the first P we look at. This element of the marketing mix will focus on the physical good and its features, the quality level, accessories, packaging, warranties, product lines, branding, etc. Uh, marketers just tend to use this to appeal how their physical product meets the needs of consumers on the basis of how it looks, feels, and works. Uh, usually this is going to appeal to their senses, but marketers need to be aware that any features that may be a turnoff for consumers need to be avoided, and maybe features that they don't understand or can't figure out how to access, you just got to keep it as simple as much as you can. Uh, specifically think of an iPhone. The product is a sleek phone, comes in a box that is actually satisfying to open in and of itself. Uh, it looks and smells new, you hold the power button, and it's already started up, all you have to do is follow the instructions. Now compare that to an Android that's cheaper on the market, a lot of times the experience is not as pleasing. Um, and next we're going to look at place. So this is where you're going to go get your service or product sold. Is it going to be sold out of a store? Will someone have to order it online? Will the service take place through an app or an employee? These are some of the questions you might ask when considering the place for your service. Um, you need to keep in mind how easy it is to have access to what you're trying to sell because if people can't get there, if it's too much of an inconvenience, they'll choose another option. Uh, Starbucks, for example, uses this to their advantage and you'll notice that if you go to ASU specifically, there will be a Starbucks around every corner and building you go. So that means they will never have that out of sight, out of mind psychology used against them because you're going to smell them and see them every day because they just picked a great place to market. Um, next is price. Uh, price is usually easier to understand. It can have some hidden effects that you didn't think about. Uh, there's more to it than just making money. So does your brand need to undercut the market, take a loss of revenue for the sake of getting your name out there? Um, do you need to penetrate the market by pricing your service near cost so that you can make enough profit to stay alive but kind of hurt those others who may be in competition? Uh, you may think people want to have price leadership, uh, which is just lowest cost, you know, but that can hurt your brand or service if you're too cheap, because not only do you lose money, but you also lower your brand image saying you're worth less than others who are charging more. So marketers need to understand that price can have a huge impact on perception. So if you're offering a really good and unique service, then your pricing should reflect that. An example of this can be seen how uh, Google entered the phone market when they first came out with uh, the Pixel, it was only about $400. A lot of people bought their phone just because it was cheap for the amount of technology you were getting. Now they just penetrated the market, got a decent market share. Their phones are all the way up to $1,000, just like the iPhone. Um, so the next P is going to be promotion. Think back to positioning for this one because you're going to focus on your target segment and decide what the best way to reach them is. If you're targeting those college students, for example, one way to promote your service may be free handouts at campus or maybe coupons or freebies. Most college students are going to be on a budget, you know. Uh, now, you don't want to discount your service if it's in high demand because when it goes in low demand, not as many people want it, they're going to expect you to lower your prices even more to get them in the door. Uh, you know, so you don't want to do that. You want to avoid that. But you can use in-store merchandising, which would be like branded boxes, or more commonly services will create internet advertisements shown on Snapchat or websites that display deals, etc. Instagram shows me these cool little boxes full of manly equipment because I search for those items frequently. They also provide a deal that says, hurry and get this deal before it expires, making me think they're giving me such a great deal and I should feel entitled to reciprocate by buying from them, which a lot of people actually do. Um, so another really important one that's uh, going to be more important to services, uh, second maybe to the service itself, is people. People include every person involved in creating a service for the customer. So let's think about this from a restaurant perspective. You go to Steakhouse A and they serve you a perfect steak. So juicy, warm, came out at the right time, the price is perfect, but your waiter never comes to refill your drinks didn't offer you any A1 sauce on the side and when you try to stop him he puts a finger up and says wait your turn please now steakhouse B steaks expensive like most steak is comes out a little undercooked after you waited 10 minutes to get it you tell your server and he apologizes immediately runs back to the kitchen and within two minutes you have a new perfect steak drinks are refilled and he even gave you an extra side of fries for free because of that mishap 
So the quality was perfect for A. They did everything right, but the server ruined the whole system. Maybe the host is seats you too late or is rude or a manager doesn't visit your table. The people have to all fulfill their roles to the expectations of the customers or else the perception of the service will hurt, regardless of the quality of the service itself. And that's important. Um, you need to understand that every single part of a service must have the right people doing the right thing at the right time because one small mishap brings the whole thing to the ground. Uh, specific examples include the guy who answers the customer service call and how friendly he is to you when you need a replacement from Amazon, or maybe how knowledgeable the mechanic is when he describes the issue to you. The next P is going to be process, um, and this is also unique to the services marketing mix. It describes the delivery of the service itself, so how your service is performed for the customer, um, and it includes the quality of the service given as well as the uniformity of the service. So, uniformity would include ideas like carpet cleaning. You want customers to feel like the cleaning you gave them last month will be the same every month after that. And that's harder to do with a service than a product because you have people doing it. Uh, uniformity in delivering a constantly high quality service requires you to have a mapped out process that your employees can follow. And this structure will allow you to provide the same service across the board and allow deviations in services such as one-time discounts or circumstantial uh, occasions. As long as you don't do those constantly, customers won't expect them constantly and they'll see it as going above their expectations. Uh, and just one of the best processes in the world right now is run by Amazon because when you buy an item off Amazon, you're usually buying them because they offer fast shipping and uh, sometimes lower prices. But something people don't realize is they buy from Amazon for a sense of security. They know they're going to get their package at the time it says and they can count on that. The processes are simple and laid out, and they allow Amazon employees to know what to do and how to do it. Lastly is going to be physical evidence. Uh, that's just going to be everything you see when you go for the service. So for a customer, what elements are you going to notice, such as the storage location, the layout of the store, how it smells, looks, and feels inside. Uh, again, the service itself may be perfect, but if the physical evidence offends any of the consumer's senses, their evaluation of your service will be lower. Uh, marketers need to know the layouts of their service scape because it's very important on determining how your consumer will evaluate the service they're receiving. So even in restaurants such as Outback, usually the quiet families will be seated in the outside area and the more rowdy sports fans and partiers will be put next to the bar with a literal wall in between them. This allows Outback to serve two different segments of customers without disturbing each other. I mean, would you want to eat at a restaurant if the table was greasy and covered in condiments? Or would you want to go to a nail salon that maybe was partnered with a rowdy biker bar for whatever reason? That's just a brief overview of marketing. If you've fallen asleep and you just woke up, let me just try and summarize this summary even further. Just in a minute, give you three ideas I hope you can take away from this video. Um, first takeaway is just marketing is more than just advertising. Uh, you're not just going into a sales job. You know, you do the research, you find and target your segments. And honestly, you can work in any field that you really want to or any product or service that you want to work for. That's something that you can pursue because there's just so many options. Um, also, services versus like product marketing, uh, you got to understand that there's three key differences. You know, people, they're going to run your service. They're going to represent you. The process, if it doesn't run smooth every time, it's not going to be profitable. And just the physical evidence of what's around you, you know, you got to be aware of that. You got to know. Uh, I used to think, um, you know, I would just, in marketing, you're going to sell a Chipotle burrito. You got to understand that every little piece that goes into that new burrito, such as the guy that's serving it, because if he messes it up or if the ground's dirty or the store's gross, that burrito is not going to get any traction because of something like physical evidence or the process. Um, lastly, if you're considering marketing, uh, just go for it. You know, is too many options a bad thing? If anything's piqued your interest, just nothing's holding you back. Just pursue it. Try it out. Um, if you're at a little bit creative and you don't want to get bogged down in finance and, and all that kind of stuff, dealing with all the numbers, you know, go to ASU. Go do some marketing. Um, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. Thank you.